Hey church family, it's me, uh, Jordan. I am back with a Monday morning devotional. Uh, special thanks to Albie, uh, who had stepped up and uh, volunteered uh, to provide us with the last three weeks of devotional videos on raising Lazarus. I was uh, really encouraged by those. I hope you were as well. Um, I, I would note uh, these devotional videos are not reserved um, per se. Uh, they are, are something that we would love to see more contributions from our church family. Uh, God speaks to all of us. And so just being able to share uh, what God has been speaking to you and some of the reflections you've had on his scripture uh, as words of encouragement uh, and challenge to us as your family would be great. So um, if you happen to have something that's on your heart, um, I would love to have uh, you contact me and uh, let me know, and uh, we can coordinate getting a devotional video recorded. They're not super technologically fancy. Uh, I have my uh, camera phone just propped up and facing me, um, and I do my best to not stare at myself while recording these um, because that's unnerving. So um, I just uh, would encourage if you have something that God's putting on your heart, you feel like there is a word that you can share, um, please, by all means, uh, get a hold of me and we can go ahead and talk about it. Now, um, real quickly, uh, we're going to begin a new devotional series. We're going to be talking about the forms of worship um, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I've already talked to a few of you who I hope will be able to contribute, but um, really the heart behind this devotional series um, is to help us give prominence and understanding and perspective to how we worship and how we praise. Um, one of the great fears that I have is that we attend church and we do things out of practice or ritual. Uh, we do things from a religious obligation because everybody else is doing it and that's what we've always done. And so I want to spend some time reflecting on the forms of worship, what we do in, in terms of worship when we raise our hands, when we clap, when we sing, um, however you worship. I want you to spend some time reflecting on the significance of that um, as you prepare to come into our gatherings, um, how we worship should be a reflection of our heart and uh, our heart towards God. And so uh, that is going to be what we're talking about. We'll be uh, doing some devotional uh, uh, verses and reflecting on just the different forms of worship uh, that are exemplified there. Uh, to begin, I want to start with a verse from First Chronicles, actually a series of verses from First Chronicles 16, uh, beginning in verse 23. Again, this is First Chronicles 16, uh, 23. This is David's song of thanks, uh, is what the section is titled in my Bible. Uh, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness or holy attire. Let the, uh, excuse me, tremble before him all the earth. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. And let them say amongst the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. See, the language of worship should be the language of the church, and it should be our individual language uh, as we reflect on Jesus Christ, our Savior, and God who sent him, and the Spirit who empowers us and enables us. Uh, worship should come naturally to us. It should be uh, something that just pours out of us as we have a proper position uh, in reflection and, and of, of who our God is. And so a few things that just jumped out to me in reading this. Uh, tell of his salvation from day to day. Do you really speak of the salvation that you have through Jesus Christ from day to day? This is David's encouragement to the people of Israel. This should be an encouragement to us. We're part of that same family. We've been adopted into that family. We're supposed to declare his glory among the nations. And in the Old Testament, the nations was sort of the, the, the foreign gods, the, the, the people who believed in foreign gods, people who didn't follow the God of Israel. 
Uh, he wants, David wants his people to say, hey, I want you to tell of his glory among the unbelievers. Tell them, tell them about his marvelous works. Proclaim the marvelous works that he has for you. Do, do we do that? Do we proclaim his great works and his great worth and what he does among unbelieving people? He goes on, he says that God is to be feared above all gods. I've been reflecting a lot on this verse, um, that uh, in him we live and move and have our being. That should strike some fear into our hearts. Certainly, we find comfort in the knowledge that God is love and all things work together for the good of those who believe in him and love him. But it should still strike us with a certain amount of, of fear and awe that in him I live and move and have my being. All of the things that I purpose in my life are, are held in his hand and are within his control. It should give me a, a position of respect before him. It, it says that all of the other idols are worthless. Now, interesting thing about worship is worship is about ascribing worth to something. So when we wor worship something, we are giving it worth and we are giving it value. The, the way that we worship is a way of establishing the value of something. And so he uses this counterpoint, David does, to say all of the other idols are worthless. And this is before he goes on to encourage us to worship, um, again, to ascribe worth to God. He goes on into this sort of this litany of things that God is worthy of worship for. He created the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. In his presence, there is strength and there is joy. And uh, he goes on to encourage us what we can say about God, that he is the God who uh, gives glory and, and strength. He is the God who, uh, who is the one who, who creates and who, who lords and rules over other things. Uh, and he goes on to say that creation, he says, let creation proclaim these glories of God. And so he just has this sort of amazing verse. And there's sort of an interesting one. If you ever wonder why you should dress up to go to church, there's sort of a, a reasoning here, uh, which is sort of a funny one. I, I never really had a good explanation as a kid as to why we should dress up fancier than we normally do. And it's sort of this interesting one, which I, I hope you catch here as we, we look at it. So he says, um, it says, where we go, um, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness or, or splendor of holy attire is what's used in other passages. And, and, and so he's saying, worship the Lord in the splendor of holy attire. So he's saying, come to the Lord in your best, in your finest. Now, the interesting thing about the, the word for worship here is that it's not about standing and singing. It's about lying prostrate or kneeling. So you get dressed up in all of your finery and the very best that you can wear. And he, David is saying, in that garment, go and lay on the floor before God. That is the worth that he has. I am flooring in comparison to God, even in my finest. Now, certainly God gives us more value than flooring. But that sense of humility, of, of being prostrate before God, where we are saying, like, hey, I am just elevating you. I am in my finest. I am coming to you with my very best. And I'm kneeling before you. I am putting myself in a position of humility, even when I am in my splendor, uh, is sort of what uh, David is calling to us in worship. And so that is sort of where I, I would like to kind of end with this theme. Uh, when was the last time uh, when you came into worship with this heart of uh, not just giving worth to God, because I think a lot of times we can do that in, in, in worship in sort of a small sense, but in the way that David describes it, come in in your very best, with your very best energy, your very best thought, your very best um, heart, with your focus, your mind at the ready, maybe even again in attire, come in and, and kneel before God or lay prostrate before the Father and say, I am, I am not worthy. And so this is the first form of worship that I would have. And I think, honestly, if you look at sort of the Greek and, and the Hebrew, um, that the words that are used for worship really throughout Scripture, they frequently are, are intended to be interpreted as this kneeling down or this laying before as a way of humbling oneself and elevating the person that, that you are, are before, in this case, God or, or Jesus. And so I would just challenge us to let us be a people who have this form of worship. When we come in, the very first thing on our hearts is, is to say, I need to go low. And the reason I go low isn't because you want to humiliate me. It's because through my humility, I am saying, this is how much you are worth to those around me. Now, David, again, if you read this passage in, in 1 Chronicles 16, 23 on, 
Uh, he is not negative. His, his humility does not come with sadness. I think sometimes we feel like we only can find humility in worship when we're feeling really down on our luck. But David doesn't have that here, right? David comes in with this, this sense of, of worship that is all about the grandeur of God. And really, he has no context in. He's just saying, God is worth all of these things, regardless of how much I sin, regardless of how wrong I am, regardless of, of how much I depend on his grace. I can still come in and I can worship because of the splendor of God. So that's my encouragement for you uh, and our, my encouragement for us. Um, as we reflect on worship in the coming weeks and as we come into times of worship in, in our gatherings or even just personally, put yourself in a place where God is so elevated before you that you might as well be lying on the floor someplace in your best attire just as a way of ascribing worth and, and just speak to the splendor, speak to the great works of salvation that he has done for you. Um, I hope as we become a people of worship and a people with a deeper intentionality behind our worship, uh, we are more able to elevate God among the nations. I, I love you all. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, this coming week. We've got midweek, Thursday night, 6 o'clock. Super excited about that. Um, uh, food starts at 6. Doors are open at 6. It's kind of a soft open, so come as you can. If you're rolling in from work, grab the kids, grab the family, get in quickly. We've got classes starting about 6.45 to 7. Um, just really is going to be an amazing time of community, of fellowship, of learning, of, of people uh, binding uh, together. Um, and then we also uh, will be back again. We've got a, a Sunday service the following weekend at uh, 10 o'clock. I, I love you all. Um, again, look forward to seeing you this Thursday at midweek. Bye.